Well, it was a memorable day for students at Laval Liberty High School. They welcomed a special guest at their school today, Paralympic gold medal winner Benoit saint He's uh, uh, He's on his way to Vancouver. Sabrina Marandola was there to uh, check it out, and she joins us in studio. Hi. Hi, Bernie. So uh, why was Benoit there? Well, uh, Bernie Benoit was there because school administrators uh, invited him. This is a school that's very sports-oriented. They have a sports program there. Uh, Kids are in school from 9.30 until 4.30. They have an extended day uh, so that they can do sports as well. They even have their own skating rink, actually. Every winter, they make their own ice. It's uh, right there by the schoolyard, and uh, the kids can uh, skate during recess or after school. Uh, Hockey teams play there. So uh, given that the school is so focused uh, on sports, they often have athletes come in uh, to talk to the kids. So uh, what did Benoit saint Amar talk to them about? Well, saint Amar he walked into the auditorium and the kids greeted him. They had loud cheers, uh, chanting, Go Canada, go, uh, cheering on Team Canada. And saint Amar stood on stage. He was wearing jeans with a red, black, and white Team Canada jersey. He had the number 22 and his name printed on the back. And you would never know that this guy has a disability just by looking at him. He's standing there tall and proud uh, at the front. And the 31-year-old has a very compelling story, though. He's been through a lot. And and you know your story's compelling, Bernie, when you can get 200 teenagers to keep quiet for over an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so you could basically hear a pin drop in that auditorium while uh, St. Amand was speaking. And he shared his personal story, and he said he can really connect to teenagers in particular because he was a teen when his whole life was changed. Before the age of 15, he was living a pretty normal life. He grew up in St. Hubert, uh, Montreal South Shore, and like many Canadian boys, grew up skating, was skating since the age of three and playing hockey. And uh, he went to high school, and his biggest dream, like many kids, was to make it to the NHL, mm-hmm. was to be drafted. But all of that changed when he was 15 years old, the age actually of many of the kids in that auditorium. So here's Benoit saint Amat telling the students about that difficult period in his life. At the age of 15 years old, I was diagnosed with a bone cancer in my right leg. So I had a couple of chemo treatments, um, lost my hair, lost a lot of weight, uh, you know, sick like a dog. And then two years later, I had to take a decision. Uh, do I keep my leg that's been, you know, not working for me and would not allow me to play any sports, or do I get my leg cut off? So I had to take a decision at 17 years old to get my leg cut off. So today I'm standing in front of you and you're like, well, you got two legs, you're lying. Uh, no, this leg is actually a fake leg. So. So you can hear the kids there kind of ooing and aahing. And at that point, he lifted up the pant leg of his jeans to reveal the prosthetic limb. So the kids were just amazed looking. And his leg was amputated above the knee. And uh, that's when his life changed. But he argues it changed for the better at that point. Sounds like he's got a pretty positive attitude. He really does, and that's what he says got him to the Paralympics. Uh, St. Thomas says after he had his leg amputated, he was determined to still keep active and keep doing the things that he loved most in life. And what he loved most, Bernie, was hockey. That's really where he learned uh, about sledge hockey. He started getting informed, finding out where can I play, what can I do. So he discovered there's a group in Montreal that practiced sledge hockey. So he joined the team. Now, sledge hockey, it's exactly like ice hockey, except the players are sitting down. They're in what's called a sledge. It has blades underneath it. So they are skating and the players kind of push themselves Mm -hmm. on the ice. They're holding two hockey sticks, one in each hand, and uh, they push themselves. And it's really a fast paced game. Uh, They body check. They shoot pucks at about uh, 100 kilometers an hour. So uh, pretty fast paced game. And he began playing. It was in 2003 and he saw he had a knack for it. So one of his teammates said, hey, you know, Benoit, you should try out for the national team. You're pretty good. So he tried out for the team. He made it, went to Turin, Italy. And that's where he won a gold medal in the last Olympics in 2006. And he had the medal with him today, Bernie. He pulled it out of his pocket and he showed it to the students. And he talked about how deeply that gold medal really impacted his life. The impact that getting one of those means, well, it basically means driving to Ottawa two to three times a week. It means waking up at three or four o'clock in the morning to go to training. It means having your shoulders hurt almost all the time. But trust me, when they put one of those around your neck, you forget about it. You forget about everything that hurts, 
you forget about the fact that you have to wake up every morning to go to training and it was all worth it. So his main message, you know, just work hard for what you want and don't listen to people who tell you your dream is crazy or it's a waste of time. Just keep at what you really want to do. So it's a pretty powerful message. How, how did the students react? Well, they were very intrigued, listening very attentively during the presentation. I spoke to them after. Here's what they told me. It was amazing. Uh, he's a great guy. He's been through a lot in his life and uh, he's an amazing inspiration. And it's amazing to have him at our school today. Even if you had cancer or you have a... An eight leg injury, anything like that, you still have uh, a place here and we're not going to be judging you on how you are, who you are. Mr. St. Amand has like, got to be one of the biggest inspirations I've ever seen. I find that he was really brave and uh, I, like, I should be grateful for like, not being sick, you know, and I'm really healthy and I'm always in doing sports, you know, so it's like very uh, touching. So they were very moved-burning, as you can hear there, and uh, St. Emma already promised he'll visit them after the Vancouver Games. He's hoping he can bring back another gold medal to show them again. Let's hope. Well, speaking of gold medals, uh, did, he, did he talk about uh, the Own the Podium program? And uh, I'm wondering, does he feel pressure to come home with gold? Well, I asked him about that. He said for him it's more about having an inner drive to win gold. I did ask him, though. The kids were watching a video about the Paralympics, and here's what he said about the Own the Podium program. Own the podium is not only to win all, all 28,000 gold medals, it's basically to, to achieve what you are aiming for. Um, and there are some sports that owning the podium might not mean winning gold medal in 2010, it might mean winning a gold medal in 2014 and things like that. So there's a lot of great programs that are going on, that have been going on for the past four years, that have continue on after Vancouver. Um, and we're, you know, with sledge hockey, we have a really, really strong team and everybody is aiming in the same direction. Gold medal, gold medal, gold medal. So for sledge hockey, the on the podium means a gold medal, but for other sports, not necessarily a medal this time around. It could be for future. So it's all about building on that performance. Thank you, Sabrina. You're welcome. Home run, Sabrina Marandola. Well, we want to know what do you think. Uh, will you be watching the Paralympic Games? Uh,